Hi everyone, this is Katherine Carmignani for Mass Golf, and in celebration of Women's History Month, I'm sitting down with Megan Beers, our Vice President of the Board of Directors at Mass Golf and past president of the former Women's Golf Association of Massachusetts. We're going to go through the tremendous amount of history that is associated with the women's game in the Bay State. Megan, thanks for taking the time to be here with me today. Oh, you're quite welcome. I'm thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> thrilled to talk about history. I know it's a, it's a tough subject to, to tackle, but um, let's take it easy before we dive in. Tell me a little bit about your own personal history with the game of golf. Well, I started, took my first lessons probably two months before I was getting married okay. and my husband thought it might be a nice idea since he played golf if I learned how to play golf. Mm -hmm. He got me a set of golf clubs and 10 lessons right here at Thorny Lee back in 1980. All right. And I thought back then it's an old lady sport. It had nothing athletic to hold for me. It had no merit. Yeah. Till I spoke to my mother and complained that he wants me to take golf lessons and she drilled into me and said, this is the best thing you could ever do. Absolutely grab those clubs and go. Yeah. And I always listened to my mother and I did it. And it is the best thing I have ever done for myself and my family, I think. I think they had a great, um, was to take up this game and learn how to play. That's huge. I, I, that's not the first time I've heard that somebody's spouse has encouraged them to pick up the game, right? It's something to do with one another. But I love that you phrase it as, you know, it's the best thing that you could do for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You took took it upon yourself and said, this is for me now. Um, and do you feel like it's a little more athletic than what you had thought? <laughs> Abs absolutely, <laughs> because I played a lot of other sports and naturally I thought I would just get up there and kill it, mm -hmm. which I didn't. Still really haven't mastered anything that I want to master. Oh. So it's an ongoing challenge and it's definitely athletic. Yeah, no, I would agree with you on that. Um, all right, so you picked up the game in 1980. I'm gonna take it back even further. We're going to 1900, um, and we're gonna set the stage a little bit for those that aren't familiar with the, the history on the women's game in Massachusetts. The Women's Golf Association of Boston transitioned to the Women's Golf Association of Massachusetts, and then we've had this historic merger with the Massachusetts Golf Association in 2018. And right now we're Mass Golf, one of the largest state golf associations in the country. So going back to 1900, when the Women's Golf Association of Boston was formed, how significant of a fact is that, that the WGAV was formed in 1900? It's, I think it's, it's huge because you don't think about uh, women's organizing golf associations and, and doing things on a formal level like that but the little bit that I do recall from from history is that it's it was six women all around Boston mm -hmm. um, you can correct me if I'm wrong Oakley Country Club uh, uh, the Country Club mm -hmm. Brayburn and uh, Concord yep so these women yep. got together and um, said we need to get our act together and form this organization where all the women can get together and play, yep. they can compete, they can they can do all this um, these activities um, as a group. And they they formalized it. They made it official, they made it an association and I think it's amazing because there was a lot of um, women's issues going on in the nineteen hundreds and yeah. I think that this is just another one that took it forward. Yeah, they were extremely progressive for their time to be mm -hmm. doing something like this. Um, and to really paint that picture of how big of a deal it was. Um, so I've got a quote from a local media outlet, the Transcript newspaper, um, had reported on the women's amateur that year in 1900. Um, it, it, was, it was played in October versus the summer when we have it now. but. The quote says, the manner in which they took hold of the matter and organized the association and the way in which it has been conducted, free from debt and without outside assistance which could have been had at any time, 
speaks volumes for the sportsmanship involved, and affords a fine example for the men of Boston to follow. So what happens a few years after this then? So what happens after the women formed the Women's Golf Association of mm -hmm. Massachusetts, or Boston first, and then changed it to Massachusetts, the men got on board and started their own organization, which was the Mass Golf Association, the yeah. MGA, I believe that's what it was called at yeah. the time. Three years later, than the women, which is huge, and I don't think a lot of people knew that. I don't know that I knew it till about 10 or 15 years ago, that the women were first, then yeah. the men. It was, it's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome, yeah. uh, especially during Women's uh, History Month that we can talk about things like this. So beyond organizing themselves in this fashion as a, an official state golf association, um, a lot of significant impacts were made on the women's game by um, female golfers from Massachusetts, you know, who hailed from this state, who played the game really well, who were administrators. You know, what are some of those more notable contributions, I guess, to the game from some of these women in Massachusetts? Everyone should be very familiar with the Curtis sisters, Margaret and Harriet. They competed locally in amateurs, Massachusetts State amateurs, as well as nationally in the amateurs, mm -hmm. both of them in the 1900s. And then, of course, um, the Curtis Cup, yeah. which is played both in the United States, mm -hmm. Britain, Ireland. It's an international event mm -hmm. that is named in, after the Curtis sisters. So their legacy is living on and on. And two very famous Massachusetts women golfers from the 1900s, when the organization mm -hmm. was just formed, which, again, is really significant. That's incredible that, you know, the Curtis Cup is associated with two female amateur players from the 1900s, this international women's amateur competition. I, I love these nuggets, and these are things that I think the women's golf community should remember over time, so thank you for sharing that example. Now let's fast forward a bit, Pat Bradley, legendary LPGA player, six majors to her name, over 30 titles over her career, part of the World Golf Hall of Fame, being inducted into our Mass Golf Hall of Fame as well. Watching her over time and a fellow female competitor from Massachusetts, what's that like to see that on TV? Did you follow along at the time? Well, I was kind of busy in 91 and 92. I was working full time, I had three children, but it also was about the time that I just started to take golf seriously. I just joined uh, Thorny Lee as a new member at that point, and so I was just starting to play golf. So Pat Bradley, I wasn't really following, I wasn't really following any golf on TV at the imagine. time. However, Pat Bradley did come, and I got to know her a little bit more because she'd come and play a couple of pro-ams at, at um, Thorny Lee, and I do have to say what a, a perfect example, professional, friendly, you yeah. know, great with the fans. Yeah. Now, speeding up to current times, I probably, Megan Kahn and Brittany Altamari, yeah. the younger players, I, I know and follow much mm -hmm. more than I had time to do mm -hmm. back when Pat was doing her, her thing, and especially Megan Kang, because I saw her you know, come through the junior tournaments and things, and it, it's great to be able to follow them. And another Massachusetts, of course, our, our, our local Thorny Lee girl, Shannon Johnson, winning the U.S. Mid-Am, and mm -hmm. we, a bunch of us, followed her, and, and women just love to follow women's golfs. They're very mm -hmm. supportive. They cheer them on. We, a bunch of us went to Charleston and wore our colors and followed Shannon all around the course. Yeah. And we love it. And women, that's what women do, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I'm so glad you brought that up. I met you in Charleston for the first time when I started at Mass Golf. I'd gone down to follow Shannon at the U.S. Women's Open. And I didn't know anyone at the time. And I recognized immediately, well, okay, that group's following Shannon. They're from Thorny Lee, and people had told me, oh, try and link up with them. You all welcomed me with open arms, and it was an absolutely fantastic experience. And yeah, I 100% got that feeling that 
women and anyone else from the Massachusetts golf community, they want to cheer for their their fellow states, man or woman, and, and really see them succeed. You really want to try and elevate them. So over time, I can imagine you know the droves of people that probably follow Pat Bradley around. That we follow Megan King and Brittany all the all the time, and we're we try and be their biggest fans, and so understanding the history and knowing you know how important it is to kind of bolster these women up I, if that's just imperative for this sport and in growing the game you mentioned the uh, women's golf association of massachusetts the wgam and how megan kang had played in some of these events why don't you tell me a little bit more about the wgam well i got involved um i would say early on just by participating in some of the tournaments in the beginning of course spring team that was a big that's huge and still yeah. is huge but yeah. that was where i got the sense of the camaraderie early on competition mm -hmm. and seeing that it could be fun and i think i branched out from that to start to look at other tournaments the curtis cup the baker the the um as i mentioned the mother daughter i've been playing in that since my youngest was probably eight or nine years old okay. and then the other and I, I just played last year it's exhausting but it's <laughs> it, it's a lot of fun and it's something that we kind of like to do together but I started playing and then as it does people come in and say oh she's interested in this let's see if we can get her on the board or on a committee and that's yeah. how it starts I started on a committee spring team then mm -hmm. I'm a co-chair person next thing I know I'm Vice President, President, so it kind of goes, I was involved probably six or seven years before I was their president. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting, Mass Golf currently has quite a few staff members to help support the operations and everything. Mm -hmm. um, we've grown over time, but the WGAM for the most part was, uh, you know, a, a self-sustained and run organization with one or two staff members, but um, a lot of women such as yourself were we're doing the behind the scenes work in the administration uh, in in 2015 i believe the process started with this historic merger of wgam and mga and ultimately which is you know two historic organizations and associations coming together uh, those conversations making things like this happen what was that like for you well i remember i was president at the time and I had gone to a MGA meeting sitting as the president of the WGAM mm -hmm. and I knew that in golf especially local golf and the and USGA that there was a lot of talk about the state organizations and a lot of a lot of states had two organizations and and there was always the question in my mind you know why why two and mm -hmm why you know is it not a good time to think about one and clearly everybody was thinking about it I had no idea that mm -hmm. that was something but that made sense to me yeah. and it it when you see as you mentioned Mass Golf had all the resources we were really a working working board everybody was uh, did rules everybody did a tournament everybody yeah. and it seemed like a good time to bring it together and and maybe up the game, standardize things, make everything, you know, all the tournaments um, run the same way, run efficiently, and you know, because everything could be different. Different people do things different ways, and that was my thinking on the merger and the suggestion of the merger and something that I thought could be a positive for women's golf to, to yeah. be on the same level yeah, and professionally. From where I'm sitting right now and looking at the impact that's been made to date and how things have been elevated for the women's game in the state, would you, would you feel like this has been one of the most successful pieces of women's golf history, getting to this point and saying, yes, we're, all, all the things are in place to, to take this game to the next level? Yes, I agree. I, I, I you know, clearly as we've just been going through, the history of women's golf and the Women's Golf Association is huge. It cannot be denied that this was a group of very strong women 
and women carrying it on and all the the main as we talked about the charter or their mission which was again to get women together so they can play more golf compete more mm -hmm. enjoy each other's company you know like-minded women who love golf um, that is something that has always been with WGAM and women's golf and is carrying over to mass golf and has become a focus of mass golf to try and keep this this charter, this women's golf enthusiasm yeah. going, as well as bringing some new events or maybe changing things up a bit or the amateur things. That, you know, we're still in the merger, we're merged, <laughs> but we're still going with it and working with it, and it is a major focus of mass golf to to keep it going. Because you've enjoyed the administrative side of things for such a long time, you know, what's been the most rewarding piece of all this for you? I have to say over the years with the administration, I think being able to um, be a part of the beginning of the merger and actually t to still be involved with it yeah. so that it wasn't just that I maybe drop a bomb and say, why don't, you know, should we consider this? Um, staying in the game and staying with Leslie Logan, who actually was the president after me, who actually had to do the heavy lifting. I kind of <laughs> dropped a bomb and, <laughs> and exited and Leslie had to carry forward. Yeah. But being involved with the merger from the beginning and then s and staying active mm -hmm. with Mass Golf and always knowing that I'm still there um, in some capacity and now as, as, as Vice President it's not something I, I envisioned, <laughs> but here I am. And um, that has been really rewarding because I look at this as, as, as you mentioned, as, as historic yeah. for women's golf to actually take this step and say we're going to be together mm -hmm. and move forward as one organization, a large organization, as mm -hmm. you said. And I, and I think that that's another historic moment, different, mm -hmm. um, but another historic moment. And I'm really happy to be involved with it, the ups and downs and, yeah. and challenges of it, because they have been some. So yeah. I mean, as as you would guess, growing pains and. I'm happy to be part of it. So that's probably the most rewarding because it's 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 recent and it's exciting and it's changing and and it's new. Yeah, for seeing the fruits of your labor here, mm -hmm. um, the work that you did with past uh, past presidents from the WGM, their board, Leslie Logan, everybody on the mass uh, the MGA side of things. Mass golf truly is one of the, um, and I may be biased here, one of the you know, the biggest, the best state golf associations out there. So how would you describe amateur golf on the women's side in Massachusetts in present day? Yeah, so women's amateur golf in Massachusetts, probably everywhere, is a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. Clearly you have our high level players that we've been discussing, mm -hmm. as well as the, the group of women who, frankly, are probably the majority of women involved are average golfers, below average golfers if they want to look at that, but they're all women that still want to play the game, love the game, yeah. and we have everything for everybody, and always have, again, the tournaments that come over, but again, the spring teams seems to be a great starting point because you have the first cup with the high level players, the the last cup with the people just wetting their feet with competitions, but it's not really non-threatening type of things. And the women just love the game. Our, our hope, my hope, is that people will start with something like that where they're part of a team and they go in and again the camaraderie and the rah-rah and the cheering and then start to say, okay, let's let's try this Allen Bowl, let's try this Curtis Cup, let's try this event with a friend. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, grab a friend, let's go play, do, do something like that. And they love golf, and they love being with other women, and they love celebrating. It's, it's, it mm -hmm. is a mixed bag, as I said. Yeah, I like the way you, you've described it a few different times here, but 
amateur golf in Massachusetts for women, women love the game. I think that that sentiment alone resonates the most. Doesn't matter what the handicap is, doesn't matter what you've won, what you're competing in. The, the common denominator, everybody loves the game. Um, I don't know of anyone that's kind of halfway in on this. Right? No, you can't, you can't be. <laughs> it's, a, it's an all or nothing. Yeah. You do love it and you do hate it, but you really love it. That's you know, true. You only hate it sometimes. <laughs> Uh, I'm hoping this season that I don't um, hate it ever because I'm just uh, ready to turn the corner now and start playing again. Um, I'm done with the cold weather at least for a little while. So we talked briefly about the strategic plan and the women's pillar and how important it is um, to grow the game. Do you have any hopes and aspirations for um, the women's side of the game in the short term and maybe even the long term? This well, the short and long term is I would love to see more women playing mm -hmm. and more women competing. Yep. That's the short and long. Um, short term, let's get keep getting the young girls in, keep getting the young girls to play. I, I, I think about back when I started high school and college golf, I, it was there for women, mm -hmm. but it wasn't that popular. Now, you have to understand, I go back to <laughs> Title IX when things yeah. were just starting and scholarships yeah. weren't really available sure. like they are now. And I think what I'm seeing more of, at least when I go out to play, is the younger women are now playing. Scholarships available. N Northeast golfers were not always on the map because our season was so short. And so those golfers had a hard time maybe competing. But now that a lot of the universities and colleges have have golf teams. I see women starting younger. When my girls started to play and were junior members, say here, there weren't very many um, yeah. junior members, women. So I would like to see short term many more younger women coming up. Long term, I'd like to see that those women take the ball and run with it just like say maybe their mothers or their friends or mothers or whoever that they take the ball and continue this you know the fun aspect you're always going to have your high level people but I would like to see that fun aspect don't care about your handicap get out there and play with your group of women come and have lunch dinner whatever you're going to do but I'd love to see that social aspect uh, continue and have these younger people continue that on yeah. a larger level mm -hmm. um, because again it's going back to the beginning it it was one of the best um, things I did for myself it continues on I we you know how it goes you, you go on golf trips you go with I'm going with my friends I'm doing that you have another little piece of something that's just yours yeah. and it's women's golf and your friends and it's a beautiful thing yeah your your social circle is golf right now so right. women are prioritizing their time differently mm -hmm. How easy is it just to be able to say, I'm going to be able to participate in a sport, a recreational activity that I enjoy, yeah. and my friends are going to be there, and they're going to be doing that with me, rather than trying to, to juggle and balance things. So um, like-minded women playing golf together, dating back to the 1900s, um, really, really cool, and I think those women looking forward um, now would say that we're in a really good spot. Um, I want to close out by asking you what sort of goals do you have for yourself personally? We talked about your golf history. What's the, what are the goals this season for you with your golf game? My goals this season are probably what they always are when I start the season. <laughs> However, this is... I, I retired a couple of years ago. I thought for sure my handicap was going to plummet. I'd be, <laughs> be a crazy golfer. Um, and it just didn't happen. And mm -hmm. go, I, I'm really busy, which is good. Mm -hmm. But again, I will start the season saying I am going to focus a little bit more mm -hmm. on physical fitness Great. for golf. Yeah. Because I know it's key. I, I read and watch all the videos that yeah. you send out. I'm not kidding. I have them frozen yeah. and I'm like, well, I can do that little left. I, I've got to focus yeah. more on the physical fitness mm -hmm. um, 
I focus a little less on lessons because yeah. I've been ta taking lessons my whole life. I think I know my game, yeah. but I want to get physically fit yeah. and then focus a little bit more when I'm playing about how I'm playing and not just okay. going out there and having the fun time that I usually do. I want yeah. to be a little bit more serious this year. Okay, taking That's the it. game a little more seriously and, and the golf fitness component of it. It's good for you. It's good for your golf game. Yeah. I, I'm with you on that, and I hope your handicap goes down. It's. It I'll keep. I'll keep it an eye on it. It can't go any higher. Oh, yeah. oh please. <laughs> <laughs> oh geez. Well, Megan, thank you so much for taking a, a walk down memory lane for you personally, but also honoring the rich tradition and history of the women's game in Massachusetts by kind of giving everybody a taste of what it's all about and I hope people look back into it and think you know this is a really important and special place to play the game so thank you for the time today. Thank you so much it's fun. <laughs> Thanks.